More than 3,600 years ago, the Chu were exiled from the central plains of China. The central plains were the birthplace of mainstream Chinese culture. In their long journey toward the southern wilderness, the Chu had to survive the assaults of the Shang King's army and barbarian tribes. In the centuries that followed, the Chu dreamed of reconnecting with the land of their ancestors. But they could not do so without a leader capable of the task. The state of Chu was one of the two great powers of the spring and autumn period. It was the first to build a great wall to protect its territory. It was the first to establish county level government, the first to use the writing brush, and the first to make iron swords. However, its history has largely been obliterated. Its nemesis, Emperor Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China, ordered the destruction of all other states' records in his great purge of books in 213 BC. A history of almost 800 years was all but obliterated. The name of the state of Chu was surrounded by a myth until when, from the 1920s onwards, archaeologists started making tomb finds confirming the existence of this ancient kingdom. Several burial sites in the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River yielded remarkable artifacts which revealed an artistic heritage of extraordinary richness. By the 1970s, a drum and a sword had been unearthed from a Chu tomb at Jiang Ling in Hubei province. A few years later, the tomb of Marquis Yi of the Zheng Kingdom revealed a huge collection of bells and musical instruments at Suizhou in Hubei. In 2008, a huge tomb was excavated at Jingzhou in Hubei province. Its scale can only be compared with that of Qin Shi Huang himself. Besides the extravagant horse and chariot burial, the symbol of a great king in Zhou times, the artifacts discovered reveal a culture of unusual sophistication and elegance, both in manufacture and design. Throughout its history, the state of Chu was associated with the influence of the shamans, magicians, and diviners. They were seen as representing a passionate, primitivist culture, in contrast to the measured respectability of the culture of the North.楚国的文物当中得到了一个非常完美的体现，另外一个方面说，他所透露出来的这种艺术气息，恰恰是和中原地区所要表现的这种刚劲雄浑的气息是一种很明显的、很强烈的对照。这个凤说传导出来的是一
It was once commonly believed that the Yellow River was the sole cradle of Chinese civilization. Recent discoveries from the state of Chu have challenged this and even given rise to the idea that Chu might have been ahead of the Central Plains in many respects. From the 8th to the 3rd centuries BC, under the Eastern Zhou Dynasty, the state of Chu flourished, leading the way for techniques in bronze casting, silk embroidery, as well as art, music, and literature. Chu was the first state to introduce a local county-level administration, a system that pertains in China to this day. Many have sought to compare the influence of Chu in East Asia to that of ancient Greece in Europe. foundational figures in the individualist and naturalistic philosophy of Taoism, Lao Zi and Zhou Wang Zi are both by legend associated with the state of Chu. holds that the people of Chu were forced south into exile under the Shang Dynasty more than 3,600 years ago. With no blood ties to the rulers of the Shang, they were forced from their homeland in the Central Plains and harried by Shang armies wherever they tried to settle. escape beyond the reach of the Shang at Mount Jing in today's Hubei province. There they found virgin land in an uncultivated river valley where wildlife abounds. with plentiful rainfall, was able to provide them with much richer harvests than the dry, chilly lands to the north. Now, this area, we say, from the geological scenes, it's also a natural area. It can avoid the attack of strong attacks, and the people are also better to guard. 那另外呢，以秦山为中心的这个江汉之地，那、呃、它物产是比较丰富的。从一个早先来的一个弱小的国家，到楚国发展壮大，变成一个说地方五千里代谢百万的这样一个蓝图的这样一个大国，那这个与秦山早先来的这样一个基地是密不可分的。Two kings claim to be descendants of Zhu Rong, a minister who was put in charge of fire during the time of the mythological emperor Ku. In alternative versions of his story, Zhu Rong was the great great grandson of the Yellow Emperor, who eventually succeeded the throne. 
Whichever the case, he was worshipped as the god of fire, who taught people how to cook with fire, to heat their homes, and drive away wild beasts. However, the origin of the name Chu remains subject of much debate. Legend says Ju Rong, the god of fire, had eight sons, and his clan was then divided into eight branches. His descendants lived in a land thick with chaste trees, and these chaste trees were called Chu. Others claim that the Chu were not known as such until Yu Shang, the leader of one of these eight branches, founded the Chu kingdom. Yu Shang's queen died while in labor. To save the child in her womb, the Wu, who were in attendance, cut her open to remove the child, and afterwards bundled her corpse in the branches of chaste trees. According to the lands of Chu, an ancient text written by an official historian of the kingdom of Chu, the people of Chu fled from Xinjiang in Hunan via two different routes, one towards southwest Hunan, the other southeast to Shanxi. After arriving at the intersection of the Dan and Xi rivers, they continued south, finally settling on the plains around Mount Jin. Centuries passed. The Chu people kept alive the memories of their ancestors, that they were the offspring of Gao Yang, the sky god, and Zhu Rong, the god of fire. Thus, Chu Yuan, a Chu poet and minister of the fourth century BC, begins his verse on the sorrow of separation by claiming to be descended from Emperor Gao Yang. It shows how the Chu still claimed recognition in the deepest roots of Chinese culture. The Chu adapted the cooking pots of the Central Plains to suit their new environment. The pots became taller and larger, allowing more fuel to be used to cope with the damper, more humid conditions, and for more food to be cooked at once. This 这非常有机地结合在一起的一个具体的物质。啊，这个是楚楚文里面这个标志性的器物。The Han River area was home to several ethnic groups. The Bai Pu at its mid and downstream sections, where it joins the Yangtze. The Ba people in the southwest, and the Yue in the southeast. The Chu, immigrants from the north, began to interact and absorb parts of the cultures of these other groups. This new land provided the Chu with a shelter in exile. Through intermarriage, the Chu established closer ties with the Yang and the Ba. But they jealously guarded their distinct identity as descendants of Zhu Rong, the god of fire. This was their way to remember 
that they were a hand people from the Central Plains and not some peripheral barbarians. Chorun 在中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的中国的
and that of his equally vicious concubine, Da Ji. When Ji Chang went to see the king, pleading for the abolition of cruel punishments, the king tortured and imprisoned him. During the seven years he spent in prison, Ji Chang was able to send messages to the vassal kings and clan chiefs of the Shang domains, urging them to unite and overthrow the dynasty. call for change under heaven, and Yu Xiong was willing to answer that call. The rebellion that Ji Chang sought to incite was for Yu Xiong, the opportunity he sought for the Chu to reassert their identity as heirs to the Central Plains culture and recovery of their lost lands. time for the Chu to take up arms and avenge the centuries of persecution they had suffered. <laughs> Yu Shang led his warriors to join the rebellion. There could be no turning back. The Shang Dynasty that had stood for five centuries was shaking in its foundations and the world was beginning to turn.作为楚国人自己呢一方面他们知道自己的文化的本源来自来自中原但是他们自己因为地域的地域的关系他们自己在这个生存和发展的过程当中形成了与中原文化风格迥异的一种文化传统他们承认中原的这个正统地位因此
be it as dukes, marquises, or counts. Chong Li naturally expected some recognition for the service he and his father had given.首先周天子把自己的王室成员Chong Li was to be disappointed. There was no recognition for the contribution of the Chu. It remains unclear whether this was because the Chu was too far away from the center of power or because Chu was still seen as a barbarian state. But undoubtedly, it was a heavy blow. For centuries, the dream of returning to the Central Plains had hung over them. Under the leadership of Yu Shang and Shang Li, Chu has sacrificed much to see the new Zhou dynasty overthrow the hated Shang. All had come to nothing. Zhou 那么血缘的亲书所以他没有在这个周人的这种战略格局之中占有一席之地 The power politics of the new dynasty left Chu marginalized and ignored. The blood of the warriors had been shed in vain. However, the Wheel of Fortune was to turn again. When the second king of the Zhou dynasty, King Cheng, came into his majority, he asserted himself by enfiefing Yu Shang's great-grandson, Shang Yi, to the rank of hereditary viscount. Yeah,就是他一个学人比较低。第二个呢,就是他地方非常狭小。恐怕就是在江汉地区的某一个地方的,就是丹阳为中心的这一个很小的范围之内。虽然这个自然武士你地这地位,呃,地方并不是很大,
After the centuries of being persecuted or ignored, these despised and dispossessed refugees from the Central Plains had finally recovered something of which had been denied them. From this tiny statelet of 50 square miles, Chu would grow into one of the two greatest powers of pre-imperial China, and one whose own influence would stand for millennia. According to the historical record, in the commentary of Zor, shortly after the state of Chu was established, they received a decree from the king of Zhou. The highest ruler of the dynasty was summoning his vassals to attend him. Chong Yi, newly enfeoffed as Viscount of Chu, saw this invitation as an honor. But at the same time, he was concerned his state was too poor to offer any tribute to the king. The text on bamboo slips held in Beijing's Tsinghua University Library says in the early days of the state of Chu, the people managed to build an ancestral temple, but so poor they could produce no sacrificial offerings. So instead, they stole a calf from a neighboring state and discreetly sacrificed it to their ancestors one evening. Whether the tale of cattle rustling is the real reason that the Chu performed their ancestral rites at night is a matter of debate. But what the anecdote does reveal is that compared with the prosperous developed states of the Central Plains, the state of Chu was poor and backward. It was a very long journey for Shang Yi to reach the Zhou capital at Haojing in what is today southwest Shanxi province. The Zhou had installed a new theory of political legitimacy to justify their triumph over the Sheng, the mandate of heaven. They also initiated a new taxation system under which the central field in a three by three division of land was farmed as tribute by the peasants on behalf of their lord. But the lands of Chu were paltry fare. It must have been with a mixture of excitement and trepidation that Shang Yi headed north. As King Cheng's vassals gathered before the palace in Haojing, Shang Yi and his entourage would have felt inadequate in the face of the opulence on display by the other nobles. Some of the court officials even doubted Shang Yi's status as a vassal lord. Shang Yi had brought in tribute a peach wood bow and a harvest of kogan grass used for thatching, medicine, and worshiping of gods. Chong Yi's tribute did not earn him much in return from the king. Although a Viscount, the second from bottom rank in the system of peerage, he was made a torchbearer, along with a chieftain of the barbarian Xianbai tribe from the north. He found himself excluded from the meetings of the great lords. He did 就是那个包毛素酒仪式之前
。第三呢，就是寂寥守田，就是点燃那个篝火晚会的火种。实际上，这三条在我们看来都是服务人员做的，让一个一国之君来做，的确有一点跟他的身份不相符。应该来说，对他内心是一种刺激，强刺激。When Shang Yi saw how he was excluded from the ritual, he would have realized that in the eyes of the ruler of the Zhou Dynasty, he was just another barbarian chieftain, albeit one that was in name at least a viscount. But Shang Yi, he is like this. At the time, he thought that the Zhou was beyond the pale, not possible. 不可能跟托电子讲条件，那么他完全是用梨来顺受，而且还表现得非常乖巧，非常臣服。就说你这样安排也是对的，我完全心悦臣服，我会按照周天子的安排，谨谨慎慎的做好我自己的事。那么这是一种韬晦之计。Chong Yi's strategy paid off. King Chong was satisfied with his service. When King Kong of Zhou succeeded his father, King Chong, Chong Yi retained his position, lowly as it was, as guardian of the torch. At least this loyal abasement would ensure that the Chu was free from a sort of punitive aggression to which it had been subject under the Sheng. And to some extent, the king's hands were tied as to whom he could show favor. In peacetime governance, the king had to make sure that all his rivals for power within his own clan were satisfied with their share of the wealth of the kingdom. According to history texts, of the 71 states established in the early Zhou dynasty, 53 were held by members of the royal family. The king made all his male relations vassal lords of these states, and their peasantry provided tribute to them, in exchange, notionally at least, for military protection. Think of the king's king, Yu Xiong, who made his life and gave his life for the king's life. But when he was in the war, he was left behind the Zhou king. Now, Xiong Yi is working hard, working hard, working hard. 但是他的汗水和付出却仍然无法填平那道血缘的鸿沟。在血缘决定一切的周朝，边远的这个蛮夷的小国，注定只能得到这样的待遇。所以，熊毅意识到他的所有的努力只能是徒劳。作为一个边远的小国，他只能强咽下这口气。The Chu, a state born from exile, in centuries of persecution, had found no rewards in loyalty to the new regime of the Western Zhou. After Shang Yi died, his heir Shang Ai refused to pay tribute to the Western Zhou kings. King Zhao of Zhou was not amused. He was determined to bring the Chu to heel. His anger and contempt for the Chu was recorded in the Book of Songs. O thou fool of Chu, thou have chosen as thine foe the great power of the central plain. In the 1970s, a horde of more than 100 bronze vessels was unearthed 
at Fufeng in Shanxi. Among the bronzes was this famous basin. The inscription on the basin describes how King Zhao gathered his armies to make war on Chu. Zhou Zhao Wang 率军渡过了汉水以后，啊，就是遭到了楚人的用游击战术的这种抵抗，主力避而不战啊，然后不断的用小部队去骚扰啊，导致这个周人疲惫不堪啊，最后呢被迫北撤啊。The war lasted for eight years. King Zhao led three campaigns against Chu, and none went well. Before the last one in 977 BC, King Zhao's officials observed a comet crossing the region of the Pole Star. They took it as a bad omen, and so it proved. A sudden storm caused the Han River to flood, and when the king's army tried to cross, the king and many of his men were drowned. 这个史书上记载呢，是碰到了天大疫，碰到了这个灾疫的天气吧。那那部队正来通过的时候，虎桥图案的断开了，所以他的六军呢、啊，有不少的都掉到水里淹死了。周昭王本身，他没有做，没有通过这个虎桥，他是坐了船。可是这个船也很乖，坐在中间呢、啊。又穿了这个婚戒了，就掉在这个水里淹死。那这最后就说成是怎么呢？这个船是丑人做了手脚。那么丑人装装扮成船夫，用这个胶把这板子凝实粘起来，粘成船。等到船到江心的时候，经过水的浸泡之后，那么这种船它是经过溶解之后，它就散了。drove the Chu further to the south, but they were no longer at the mercy of the northern armies. After centuries in exile, they had learned to fend for themselves. Living among those regarded as barbarians by the sophisticates of the central plains had made the Chu tougher and more resourceful than those who claim to be the sons of heaven. King Zhao's campaigns against Chu set in train a path from which there was no turning back. After royally serving the Zhou for generations, and receiving only scorn in return, the Chu understood that their bonds with the Central Plains were now severed for good. A final campaign in 941 BC by King Zhao's son, King Mu, failed as the others had before. Instead of seeking vassalage to rulers of the faraway Central Plains, the Jew had to build their own state and their relations with the tribes of the South. This was to be the turning point in Jew's history, when it ceased to look north and found confidence in itself. The Western Zhou gradually declined over the next two centuries as various vassals sought to defy the power of the center. When in 771 BC, King Yo of Zhou sought to replace his queen with a favorite concubine, his father-in-law rebelled. In the turmoil, the capital was sacked by Chuan Rong barbarians from the northwest, and King Yo was killed. The dynasty retreated east to establish a new capital near Luoyang, but its power was never to be the same. China had entered the famous Spring and Autumn period. Meanwhile, Chu had launched his own campaign of expansion, in 863 BC, it swallowed up the small neighboring state of Ar. It then expanded westward into the state of Yang in the west, and the east to the state of Yangyua. The 
the state of Chu now occupied a strange position. Much of its culture still conformed to that of the Central Plains, but it denied any authority to the kings of Zhou. When Chong Chu, the conqueror of Ark, named three of his sons as kings in defiance of the rules of vassalage, he replied to his critics, since we are barbarians, we pay no heed to the conventions of the kingdom of the Central Plains. This message could not have been clearer. Chu would only answer to itself from now on. And so it was to be for the next 600 years. In 704 BC, Shangtong formally declared himself to be King Wu, the first king of Chu. He was a man of marked ambition, having supposedly murdered both his brother and his nephew to seize the throne. An age of continuing warfare and chaos could only but offer him the opportunity he desired to enlarge his domains. <laughs> 